Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. We finally have a nice day here in Wisconsin. It's going to be 38 degrees. We've got some snow melt happening. It's actually got me starting to think about uh, some open water fishing, which may not be too far away here in Wisconsin. So that's kind of exciting. And one of the first baits that I like to use after ice out is a jig. Not just any jig, a finesse jig. Finesse jigs are phenomenal fish catching baits that are really good under very cold temperatures. So that's what we're going to talk about today is the finesse jig. Before I get into it though, I do want to remind you guys that with the northern lakes starting to open up, if you're looking for a little help on your local lakes, go into the description of the video and click the link to fishthemoment.com. We've got tons of lake breakdowns. I've been uh, doing all kinds of spring lakes and summer lakes for the northern countries, smallmouth down south. I've got some for California. I'm trying to go all over the place in the northern half of the country, as well as any smallmouth fishery. That's all fair game for me to do. If I have not done your lake yet, feel free to request a personalized lake breakdown, which you can do through the site as well. Also, if you're looking to purchase some tackle, use the uh, links that I provide to tacklewarehouse.com. That's a good way to support the channel. I've got links in the description. Uh, feel free to bookmark that for future purchases as well. Very much appreciated. All right, guys. So here in the North Country, when the ice comes out, a lot of times what happens are the largemouth pu push into the shallowest of areas. Uh, you know, this kind of pretty much happens the same thing down south. If you've got wintering largemouth, once you start getting some warm days, the largemouth will push up into sh some shallow areas. So what you're looking for is anything from vegetation or hard bottom, so mostly your rock. Uh, if you've got vegetation, I'm talking anything where you've got previous year's growth, it could be uh, hyacinth, it could be cattails, it could be milfoil, it could be wood. Anything that's going to absorb heat in that shallow water is what you're looking for. Dock posts are great as well. So because of the fact that you're going to be fishing around either rock or any sort of hard cover or thick cover, whether that's weed or wood, you're going to probably want to rely on a jig or a Texas rig. But I feel like a jig really out excels past a Texas rig because it gets more bites. It's a bigger, bulkier bait, uh, much more slow moving. It's not necessarily meant just to work inside of the cover. You know, with the Texas rig, a lot of times you'll punch that down into the grass or you know, flip it around some wood and then you're done. You'll get bit on it, but it seems like in the cold water, the fish a lot of times want something a little bit more bulky or like a jig. It's one of the best times of the year to throw a jig is in the cold water right after the winter months, whether that's when the ice comes off up north or when you start getting some warm days down south. You know, So you're really just gonna be looking for those objects that are going to retain heat from the sun because you'll get the first good wave of largemouth will be up into those areas. It's one of my favorite times to fish because a lot of times the bite doesn't even pick up till the afternoon, so you don't have to be out super early. Uh, a lot of times it's the nicer days of the of the late, late winter, early spring, and it just feels good to be on the water. So I'm looking forward to it when I'm here. Some of my favorite finesse jigs to throw, you know, I've talked about most of these in the past. I really, really like the Scott Canterbury, uh, compact flipping jig. To me, what this is, is a super beefed up Bitsy Bug. Most of us have thrown the Bitsy Bug in previous years, but it's got a stouter hook, a, a really good uh, weed guard on it, a good strong hook keeper. And I'll trim that skirt down a ways. So, I mean, it's a very compact little bait, but I really like it for flipping around uh, you know, when you've got your, your, any sort of grass or you've got any wood, it's just a really good heavy duty, but really small little jig. So I really like that one. If I'm fishing around mainly rock, then I've got, uh, I like to go with the Luke Clausen dirty jigs, finesse jig. Again, it's just kind of your spider jig or your spider collared, flared collared jig. Uh, it's really good for working around rock or bluff. That type, of, that type of structure. The ball head on it is not necessarily the ideal for, for say, fishing or rock or grass. That's when I would go maybe with the 
uh, Scott Canterbury compact flipping jig, but it's a great compact jig. Along those same lines, if I'm fishing, if I really want to go finesse, and I've talked about this, this is the tightrope uh, firework jig, and you can see how much smaller this is compared to the Luke Clausen finesse jig. I mean, they're, it's about half the size, and the hook is a significantly smaller hook. So it just kind of depends what you're after. You know, if you're going super, super finesse in really clear water, that's when I like to go with the firework jig. If I'm fishing just kind of standard watercolor and I can work it down a, a, say, a rock bank, that's when I like to go with the Luke Clausen one. And then the last finesse jig that I like to throw is the Kitek. It's just the casting, their casting jig. It's not what I, I don't think they really promote it as a finesse jig, but it's a very small compact jig with a light wire hook. And I've talked about this as well. This is the one I like to throw if I'm dealing strictly with with rock just because it's a tungsten head uh, and it allows me to get some better uh, some better noise from the tungsten hitting the rock and I, I feel like it generates good bites. It's not going to be as weedless as either of these two jigs with the flared uh, skirt collar on it, but I do feel like if you've got a mix of wood on say a 45 degree rock bank or a channel swing bank, uh, or you still want to flip some dock posts that's got, you know, some hard bottom areas, that's when I like to switch over to this Kitek casting jig because it kind of has the best of both worlds, you know, being that it's tungsten head, but it's still relatively a weedless bait, and it, it allows you to get some sound of your fishing rock bottom. For me, though, it's kind of more of a specialized jig. I don't throw it that much in the North Country. It's more of a jig that I like to utilize if I'm, say, in the Ozarks region, that's one area where I really like to throw it. But it is a very good jig, and it, 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 you know, you can fish it in a lot of different manners. The one thing I don't like about it is I feel like you lose fish on it. It's got a lighter wire hook that's a little bit bendier, and I, I do lose a lot of fish on it for some reason. So those are the those are the jigs that I like to throw. From a trailer standpoint, I've got a handful of different trailers I like to throw. One is the little three inch Berkeley pit boss that I've got on this Luke Clausen compact. This is a very good all around trailer. Again, I like to use it though, again, when I've got a little bit more watercolor, uh, just because it is gonna give out some good vibration and it's more on the higher end of the water temperature range. So if I'm dealing with water that's getting into the low fifties and starting to get higher, that's when I like to go with something with a little bit more movement in the legs like the three inch Berkeley Power Bait Pit Boss Junior. That's a great trailer for all small jigs. Uh, here I've got, this is the little Maxent Little Trooper. I did a video on this jig uh, a few weeks ago, but that's a good little uh, trailer to throw if you're talking micro jigs like this. That's really the only time I use it as a trailer. I do like to throw that little guy on like a net head. Moving on, another really good bait for any of these jigs, especially in cold water, and if you're dealing with clear water, that's when I like to throw the little Eerie Poor Boys Eerie Darter Junior. That's a great little trailer to put on any of these jigs, especially in cold water. Cold, clear water, I will say. Uh, again, if I, anytime you're dealing with a jig, if you're, if you're doing a lot of flipping and a lot of, uh, say, trying to get back into some laydowns or underdocks, a good one that I like for skipping is just the small, this is the little meaty chunk. This is the two and three quarter inch size. That works great on any of these little compact jigs. Uh, you know, it's a classic jig trailer shape. It's just a smaller profile. I will both thread this as well as nose hook it, just depending on what I'm looking for. I've done videos on that as well. But again, it's hard to beat as an all around trailer. It's hard to beat a meaty chunk. And then the last one I, I do like is again, if you're fishing, um, if I'm fishing deeper water, so let's say I've got some deeper docks or I'm fishing a channel swing bank or a rock bank that's just got some depth to it, and I'm getting fish that may be suspended higher up in the water column because of the, the sun's out and they're starting to sun themselves, that's when I will go with a finesse uh, TRD, a Z-Man finesse TRD, and you put that on the back. 
of one of these small jigs. And what that'll do, because it floats, is it'll slow up the fall a little bit and it'll give it more of a bait fish presentation. And then because none of these skirts are super overpowering, when it's on the bottom, that bait will keep that back end of the trailer up. And then it's almost like you're working a little Ned rig at the same time. So it's a good, a good way to add a little bit of a different look to your jigs, a little bit more of that bait fish presentation. And I really like it when the fish are suspended up a little bit. So if you're fishing, I say deeper docks and they might be suspended a little higher up, it seems like I get good reactions out of just using a small, uh, like a floating TRD in this case. Uh, and it just seems like it generates some good bites. So that's kind of where I'm at when it comes from, you know, my finesse baits. I try to keep the trailer simple. I really don't mix the trailers up that much. These are the standard ones that I keep in the boat. And they're all baits that I use by themselves as well. That's one thing I will say, other than the meaty chunk, which is literally a trailer, everything else is kind of a bait in its own right. And that's one thing I like to do is, is try to use baits that are standalone baits as my trailers as well, because it limits the amount of tackle I need to carry in the boat. If I've got some of these baits that I know I can flip with or put on a jig head or put on a Ned rig, then they're useful in another manner. So when I can compare them, it just means I'm buying less tackle and I'm keeping less tackle in the boat with me, which is always something I struggle with. So that's where I'm at, guys. Make sure you've got some finesse jigs in the boat for when the ice comes off or this time of year down south when you've got fish that are starting the transition from wintering areas to their spawning grounds. This is the time a finesse jig can truly excel, and it really is a good bait you need to have. It's one of my favorite baits. I love jigs. I love finesse jigs. I love big jigs. I love all jigs, so I'm a big fan. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the channel, hit the like button, share it on your social media pages, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and stay tuned. we got another video coming out tomorrow.